Welcome back everyone, it is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here, and today we are going to be going over the complete tutorial to the Gemini Crypto Exchange. So if you haven't already seen our video on how to set up your Gemini account and get verified with your driver's license, make sure to go watch that video or click the link in our description below to get an account set up today. Again, if you use our link to set up your account and deposit your first $100, you'll get a free $10 in Bitcoin and so do we, so it helps us so we can keep making these videos for you guys. So let's jump right into it. Obviously, once you have your account set up, this is what your main page on the Gemini I website is going to look like. Obviously, you've got your portfolio here. Shout out to the first person who already watched our other video and signed up, giving us our first $10 in Bitcoin on this account. But again, this is the main market page where you're going to see a list of all these different coins as well as your portfolio if you do have some coins in here. In the previous video, we already went over the market, earn, and portfolio pages. So if you don't know how to navigate the basic pages of Gemini, make sure to go watch that first video. Today, we're going to be going over how to actually use the exchange, how to make some crypto purchases, and how to move some coins around. One thing that you're going to want to do right off the bat is going to your account settings. As default, Gemini is going to be set to basic. What you're going to want to do if, if you're going to want to be using Gemini to trade crypto is you're going to want to make sure to activate this active trader setting and turn it on. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. And now when I go back to my main page, you're going to see it looks a lot different here. Now we've actually got a candlestick chart. We've actually got an order book going on over here as well as some exchange activity You can see the history of trades down here. If you're going to be trading on Gemini, you're going to be wanting to using this active trader setting because it gives you a lot more information about the actual price action of these coins here we are we're on the main candlestick chart now we have some videos on our channel that explain how these candlestick charts work. So make sure to watch those if you don't understand how these candlestick charts work. Now up here on the top left, you're going to have your different time frames that you can view these candlesticks in. So if I go to the one day, each one of these candlesticks represents a day in time. Now if I go to the six hour, these are going to represent six hours, one hour and so on. So if I'm on the 15 minute chart here, if you were day trading, this is where each candlestick is going to represent 15 minutes. So you can see Bitcoin over the past 15, 30, 45 minutes to an hour has fallen from 55,120 back down to 54,120. So about a thousand dollar move there within the past hour on Bitcoin. That's kind of how the candlestick charts work. Now you can change it to a line chart as well. So you can just see the general progression of the price, but I do like to have the candlestick chart on that way you can actually read and see the price action. Now, again, over here on the right, this is your order book. So this is everyone on this exchange's orders, right? So if we look over here in these 54,300 range, this is the amount of Bitcoin that someone is trying to sell there. Same thing here at 54,270. Someone's trying to sell that much worth of Bitcoin. So this is going to be what they call your ask chart. Down below in the green is going to be the bid chart. These are all of the pending orders that people have put in to buy cryptocurrency. So obviously right now the price is at about 54,269, but people can set orders to buy lower than the current price. And that's going to fill up the order book. And that's what creates this order book and this price action of the market trying to reach equilibrium. Now below here, this is the exchange activity. These are trades that have actually gone through. So we can see here at this exact time, someone bought 0.0014 Bitcoin for $54,270. So as people trade, that is gonna be constantly updated and you can see all of the people's history. If you wanna get started on trading, obviously you're gonna need some coins to trade around with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and deposit some money into my Gemini account using a debit card. So up here on the transfer tab, you can hit deposit into Gemini. And now I've already gone ahead and added my main debit card that I'm going to be using to purchase cryptocurrency on Gemini. But what you'll want to do to add a payment method is hit add payment method. And then you can use your bank account. You can do a manual link or you can use a debit card. Now, keep in mind, you might want to check with your bank first. Some banks don't allow cryptocurrency purchases, uh, unfortunately. So make sure to give your bank a call and see if they do allow cryptocurrency purchases. But once you add a payment method and get it verified, you should be good to go to use that card. I believe when I did verify my debit card, they went ahead and did two two um, small transactions that I had to verify to make sure it was actually my card. So I already did that. So my card is linked and good to go. All right, so once you've got your payment method added and verified here on Gemini, select your currency and then select your transfer method. Obviously there's different limits depending on whether you're doing an ACH bank transfer or purchasing with a debit card. I believe debit cards limit is $1,000 a day. Bank transfer is 5,000 US dollars a day. Also, if you do an ACH deposit, the money is going to be available instantly for trading. If you do a wire transfer, it is gonna take one to two business days for the funds to be verified. Um, but I'm gonna be doing an ACH transfer here. Select your payment method. I've got my bank account saved here and hit continue. Okay, now you're gonna enter the amount you wanna buy. So today I'm just gonna hit $100. Hit continue and it's going to give you a little overview here on the transaction again instantly available for trading hit confirm and then boom deposit of 100 us dollars has been initiated 
go ahead and refresh the page and you should be able to see that in your transfer history right here today's date i've got a deposit via bank transfer and the amount 100 us dollars so now i'm on my balances page here again i've got about 10 dollars in bitcoin that we got from someone using our referral link and then here i've got my us dollars that i just deposited now obviously right here it says one hold pending and if you hover over that all that's basically saying is you deposit 100 dollars through an ach deposit which you can trade immediately however they are going to have a hundred dollar hold on withdrawals on your balance until those funds are verified as soon as that's good to go you will be able to withdraw that so it's no big deal um, but now i've got a hundred us dollars in my portfolio obviously holding us dollars in my portfolio isn't going to do me any good because it's not a cryptocurrency it's not an asset that changes in value so i don't want to be holding us dollars because my portfolio value is going to stay the same so i want to buy some crypto so what i'm going to do i'm going to hit this little trade button here and this is going to take me back to the active trader page now i'm going to show you guys how to purchase cryptocurrency with a fiat currency balance so i've got 100 us dollars in my account and let's say i want to buy right off the bat it's going to have you on bitcoin but there's tons of other coins to choose from here on the gemini exchange so today i'm actually going to be purchasing some sandbox coins so i'm going to click sandbox here so right now it's about six dollars and forty cents here we've got the chart again i've got it on candlestick mode and we're looking at about the 15 minute chart <clears throat> sandbox is an online virtual reality world that is up and coming if i look at this order book here to make my purchase i can see that right now six dollars and forty cents is about what the price of one sandbox coin is now there's a few types of orders here on gemini that you can choose from when you're placing orders to buy coins there's a few advanced ones here that we're going to talk about in later videos but today we're just going to be going over market limit and stop limit orders and we're just going to briefly go over them and make advanced videos later on how to really utilize these different orders so uh, basically the first basic most basic type of order is going to be a market order and all this is is just when you place an order you basically have to put how much you want to spend and what it's going to do is it's just going to spend that amount of us dollars and get you whatever the best deal on the market is currently meaning see some people over here have some coins for sale for six forty six dollars and forty cents so if i requested to buy a hundred dollars worth at market price i'm going to get most of my coins for around six dollars and forty cents if we scroll up in the order book there's going to be orders from people that are trying to sell it like seven dollars eight dollars ten dollars but obviously if i do market order it's not going to buy those ten dollar prices because we've got to actually work our way up to that price first so a market order is going to give you the best deal for the coin on the market at that moment now the second type of order is going to be a limit order Order. and what this is you determine the price limit of your order so I've got a hundred dollars and let's say I wanted to buy fifty dollars worth of sandbox so down here in the USD tab I can type in 50 and that's gonna give me about 7.8 sandbox coin now what I need to do is I need to set my limit when we did a market order it automatically just gets you whatever the cheapest price is if you're buying or whatever the highest price is if you're selling but for a limit order you actually have to determine your limit so again right now sandbox has actually gone down a little bit so we're at about six dollars and 38 cents if i put my limit at five dollars that's basically saying the most i'm willing to pay for sandbox coin is five us dollars so obviously right now the price is way over five dollars we're at six dollars and 37 cents so if i put if i put that order in it's not going to go through right away actually i can go ahead and do that i'm gonna hit buy And again, the price isn't that low right now because the limit I put is the most I'm willing to pay is $5 for Sandbox Coin. The current price is at $6.38, so it's way higher than that. So it's not gonna fill, it's gonna sit here, it says 0% filled, and it's just gonna stay there until the price did get low enough. And if it did hit $5, then my order would fill when someone was looking to sell at $5 and the transaction would be filled. But I can go ahead and cancel this order because again, we're not near $5 right now. If I wanted to actually buy right now, what I could do is actually set my limit a little bit higher so let's say the most I'm willing to pay for my sandbox coin is six dollars and fifty cents right now the current price is about 638 again and I said I wanted to buy 50 US dollars worth because I'm setting my limit higher than the current market price the order is actually going to go through and I'm gonna get my coins so I'm gonna go ahead and hit buy oops and I actually didn't cancel my order from earlier so let's cancel that five dollar limit order cancel that 
if I go to my completed orders, I can see the one that just went through. I bought 7.69 sand coin for $49.14. As you can see, we've got the green word that says filled here, meaning that I actually got the coins. This other one shows that it was canceled. So if I go back to my balances now, I should be able to see the Bitcoin we have here, the sand we just bought, and my $50 remaining in US dollars. So let's go back, do it again, and try to buy another type of coin. Let's go and buy Mana, which is also another up and coming VR coin. Check out Decentraland if you haven't yet, it's sort of the future of gaming. So I've got $45 USD remaining here that I need to spend on some coins. So we're here on Mana again. It's currently at about four. You can see right here, the lowest sell order right now is $4.62. So if I put my limit at the most I was willing to pay is $4.60, my order is not going to go through yet, and it's at 0% filled because the cheapest ask price is $4.62. So I've at least got to be willing to pay the lowest ask price if I want my order to go through immediately. I set my I set my limit at $4.60, so it won't it won't purchase this $4.62 order. Now let me go ahead and cancel this one, and all I'm going to do is change my limit to $4 and let's say 65 cents. Oops, I've got to cancel my order down here again. I'm gonna go ahead and hit 100%. That's what these percentages are down here. This will purchase uh, X percent amount of whatever you have left in your US dollar uh, balance. So I've got $45 left. If I hit 100%, it's gonna spend all $45. If I hit 25%, it's gonna spend a quarter of it and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna hit 100% and I'm going to hit buy. Again, I changed my limit to $4.65 now and the lowest ask price is $4.61. So all these orders are up for grabs for me if I wanted to buy that much worth, but I'm only buying, uh, let's see, almost 10 mana coins. So I'm gonna hit buy. Boom, and it's gonna automatically go through and show on my completed orders tabs because it was pushed through. So if I hit my balances, now I can see some US dollar, Bitcoin, mana, as well as the sand coin. Now it's pretty much the same thing if you're looking to sell coins. Here we are on Bitcoin. Let's say I wanted to sell my Bitcoin, but it works in the opposite direction with the limit order. So obviously the highest bid price right now, someone's looking to pay for Bitcoin is $54,400. So I need to sell my Bitcoin at least that or cheaper. So I could say, you know what? I'm willing to sell my Bitcoin for all the way down to $54,350 and I wanna sell 100% of it. Because my limit's lower than the current market price, that should go through immediately. Boom, completed orders, filled. So now I'm gonna have a few more US dollars in my balances tab here. And again, I don't wanna hold US dollars because they don't fluctuate in value, no chance to earn or lose. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take that last $9 and purchase one more coin. We'll grab some basic attention token here, super simple. Again, let's see what the limit is. The current price is about $1.74, so I'm gonna put my limit at $1.76, hit 100%, and click buy. There we go. Now I don't have any US dollar left to spend. I've got eight cents, but that's not enough to buy any of the coin there. The only other order we talked about is a stop limit order. And what a stop limit order is, it's sort of a safety net for you if prices are gonna tank overnight. On mana, I just bought mana. Mana is currently about $4.66 but there is a chance that, right, it could crash overnight. So what I could do is set a stop limit order. Now, what a stop limit order says is when mana hits your stop price, it's going to trigger a limit order at whatever you put your limit price for. Let's say I was day trading and I wasn't willing to lose more than 2% over the night. And I bought mana at about $4.67. So to calculate a negative 2% loss, times that by 0.98, and you're gonna get $4.57 would be a uh, 2% loss. What I would do is I would set my stop limit up to, to sell at this point if we hit there. I'm gonna set my stop at $4.57. And when mana hits that price, your stop price is basically a trigger price. It's gonna set a limit order at wherever you put the limit. And a lot of people mess up by doing something like this, where they put their stop and limit order at the same price, but that's a, not a good idea because if the price of mana was, was, was crashing quickly, it would blow through the stop price, it would set your limit sell at 457, but if it already fell below 457, during that time your limit order was getting placed, the order's not gonna go through because the price is already lower than your limit order. So you wanna make sure to give a little bit of buffer room. So if your stop was at $4.57, you could put your limit at like $4.57 or $4.50. It's not a big deal if you go a lot lower because limit orders are always set up to give you the best order on the market. So it's not gonna sell super low for you when there's other orders above that. So here's a stop limit. And I actually wanted to sell actually at the 2% loss. So what I'm gonna actually do is set my stop a little bit higher, 4.6, and then put my limit at 4.56, like which will be about a 2% loss. 
100% and hit sell. Oops, I had it on buy. So you can actually set stop limits in the opposite direction. So I could say, I could say, if mana hit $5 tonight, I want to buy $100 worth. And the most I'm willing to pay is $5.10. That could be how you could set a stop limit stop limit order on the way up. But like I was saying, to save yourself, you can do a sell stop limit order. So again, my stop price is 4.6, 4.55, 100 and hit sell. So there you go. You'll see your stop limit order uh, pending right here. It'll stay there. It says not triggered yet. Again, once mana actually hit your stop price, $4.60, it's going to trigger a limit sell order at your limit price. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that though and go back to my balances page and we can see these coins here. You do have the daily auction as well as the block trade tabs here on Gemini as well, but we're going to go over those in the advanced Gemini video when we talk about these other types of orders also. One more thing also is how to get money back into your bank account or back onto your debit card uh, off of Gemini. So if you wanted to do that, you would just go to this transfer tab and hit withdraw from Gemini. And I'm guessing I'm going to have a hold still. Let's see, select currency to withdraw, US dollar. And yeah, okay, this, this account does not have a US dollar available to withdraw. And it's because I have a hold from a pending buy. It's because I just bought today. It's, they've got to verify the funds. Once the funds are verified, you will be able to withdraw them. But again, what you would need to do is first, obviously you would need to turn your coins back into US dollars. And if you had Bitcoin, you would go to sell. You would do either a market or limit sell and sell your Bitcoin for US dollars. Then you would go to your transfer tab, hit withdraw, select your currency, and then you would need to choose the destination, how much you will want to withdraw, and then the withdrawal will be complete. Again, I have a hold, so I can't show you guys today, unfortunately, but it's a pretty simple process. Pretty straightforward today, guys, how to use Gemini as well as the active trader feature within Gemini. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed or if you learned anything from the video. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below. Subscribe to our channel to catch our future videos. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.